Overstaying in the UK has caused my suffering for the last 10 years. It's a life story that I need to share with you, especially when it comes to overstaying with the visas. Especially <music> Staying in Europe and what you call visa overstay caused a lot of my suffering for the last 10, 10 years. This is a life story that I need to share with you, especially for people who do not actually know what is all about with the records regarding travel in one way or the other. Yes, we shall get in two parts and this is what we call part A. Yes, it was one day when I got a very big opportunity. It was something that I didn't expect in my life. That was in 2010. I got a time, a chance to travel to the UK. Uh, that was in Birmingham, and we are going to do what we call an apprenticeship of uh, course. And that was actually supposed to be for for two months. Remember, we did all whatever we had to do for two months. We are in a group. We are in a group of 15 people, and we went with someone. We went with a Samto representative. That is uh, a group of 18. Yes, we did all of whatever it was and you know, as you're trying to do something, something again comes in and I was like, yeah, we looked at the country, we looked at the beauty of the country and I was like, what first came in my mind, I was like, I need not to go back to my country, I need not go back to Uganda, I need not go back to my country, I need to stay here at whatever cost. Actually, as we are trying to finish up, that was what was in my mind, you just can't believe I was like, I had to plan very fast. I'm doing this, but I'm also planning. So we are left with only two days to go. Those two days we are left and we had to exit according to the rules. We had to all exit at once. So I planned well in those two days and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try to disappear. This group will go, I'll stay. Okay. So I packed all my bags and, and what I did, I got another bag. I packed in different things, right? Then I packed an extra bag, I left it, and I'm like, okay, I go out to the shop. I didn't, they didn't come back, I disappeared, because I had my own plans, okay? I didn't know about what they call overstaying the visa, that you can have the charge, you can have the ban. Those things were already at that time were not in my mind. I was thinking of staying in the UK, I was staying, staying for the whole life of my life in the UK, and starting up a life in the UK, a new life. Okay, where I can have all my life here, get citizenship, enjoy the luxurious life, uh, dream big, move like big, move to big stadiums, do what? Like, I be like a big rapper, like in New York. And I was like, that's what I thought. So, two days prior to the departure, I disappeared. I disappeared. They looked for me. I disappear but remember the condition was that you have to exit so meaning that even if I disappear the other group will still have to exit okay that was what was interesting part that saved me a little bit so they looked for me they looked for me anywhere I was in hiding because I wanted to stay inside the country they went off but remember the three people that were in charge of us Definitely, they, made, they had to make sure that when they returned back to the country, or oh, her home country, is that they had to go back with all the team. And they had to give a report. They also had to give a report to the university where we went. They also had to give a report to the police that we've all exited. But unless they, they told them that one person was missing and they gave in all my details. So I thought so much as like I stayed in Birmingham for around some Five days. I had a friend in Birmingham, by the way. It's called Morum. Morum is told to me, you know what? Things are not easy, so you need to move. We shall go to our country home that is in Newcastle. I said, really? That was so great of him. He took me to Newcastle. We moved from Birmingham. I went to Newcastle. Remember, this course was two months. I knew a little bit of all the plans, the metro stations, I knew all uh, the metro rails, I knew where I would go, I knew where I would go. A little bit of 
small towns or small places I would get to hide in Birmingham. I was already aware because we became given time to move out, to move out. And I was already aware of the map and where to go. That's the same thing that I tried to use all the strategy. So I moved, I moved, I moved on. And I, I hid. We went up to Newcastle. I hid in Newcastle for three months. So meaning that the visa that was supposed to be two months, it is now overstayed more 90 days. And remember, you're only given a gross period of only 30 days to exit the country. I did not. I was still in the country. I was hiding because I wanted to stay in the country. But all little I, did I know in my mind that I was what we call overstaying. And there were charges, there were consequences, and there were penalties for overstaying. Why am I trying to bring this? I've heard of what you call the the UAE visa restrictions, absconding, blacklist, and ban. I didn't know that your travel history can talk a lot or can say a lot when you need a visa to go to another country. Some consulates, some embassies, when you go to the consulate, he will definitely try to find out what is your travel history, what is your criminal record. They will have those details. You will never have to ask them. That's why you find sometimes you are being denied a visa. To cut the story short, I stayed there. I overstayed. So I stayed in Newcastle. It was really very good. I stayed in Newcastle for three months. Right? I enjoyed, I enjoyed. The first two months, it was really good. First month was a little bit hiding, being in the house. The second month, I tried, tried to move around, trying to go into the community, a little bit like that. So, so the third month, I didn't know that this is where the trouble was coming from. Watch out for part two. By the way, don't forget to subscribe and like and don't forget to comment.